This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Monday, the 17th day of January in the year 2022. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. Outspoken opposition member of parliament and talk show host Sherrod Duncan appeared in court this morning at the Diamond Magistrates Court, where he was charged for a cybercrime offense related to statements he allegedly made on his talk show about the information technology manager at GCOM and Neil Giddings. Duncan was represented by attorneys at law Nigel Hughes, Kimraj Ramjatan, Amanda Walton Desir, and Narissa Leander. The charge filed by the police is that on the 11th of January, without legal or lawful justification or excuse, Duncan allegedly used a computer to publish electronic data about Anil Giddings with the intent to humiliate and embarrass and to cause emotional distress. Giddings filed a complaint to the police last week, and Duncan was arrested on Friday and told of the offense. According to the police, the GCOM IT manager complained in his filing in the case that Duncan, during one of his online programs, allegedly referred to him as a jagabat and trench crapo. In court today, Duncan denied the charges and was placed in $200,000 bail by the court. He was initially placed in $275,000 bail, but that was reduced by the magistrate after Duncan's attorney is objected and reminded the court that he was already on $100,000 station bail. The prosecutor team objected to bail, but the magistrate rejected their request to place a member of parliament on remand and instead granted him bail. After the hearing, Duncan's lead attorney, Nigel Hughes, said that they intend to vigorously fight the matter. But here, the mere fact that this now is transmitted through electronic means suddenly converts what was not an offense into a criminal offense, and, and that is particularly disturbing. I certainly don't think that the act, particularly Section 19, intended what was not previously legal to suddenly become legal because you use electronic means. The opposition APNU AFC has already rejected the charge filed against a member of parliament and has accused the police of following political orders in its decision to file the cybercrime charge. The opposition has also accused the government of abusing the cybercrime legislation. More news coming up in just a moment. What is fiber? Think exceptional. GTT Fiber is an advanced high-speed internet product that delivers broadband by fiber optic cables with download speeds of up to 150 megabits per second. It means your internet is faster. And GTT Fiber comes with the added coverage of our Plume HomePass Wi-Fi system. Plume extends your Wi-Fi signal to ensure that you have the best experience in every corner of your home with Wi-Fi everywhere. Upgrade to GTT Fiber today and don't get left behind tomorrow. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo under the theme Charting a Sustainable Energy Future will be hosted at the Guyana Marriott from the 15th to the 18th of February 2022. Meet and engage with energy leaders from around the world. The conference will feature addresses from His Excellency President Irfan Ali, His Excellency Vice President Bharat Jagdio, Honorable Prime Minister Mark Phillips, His Excellency Chandrika Prasad Santoki, Honorable Prime Minister Mia Motley and many other highly esteemed speakers charting a sustainable energy future Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mom, what are you doing with GPL on your list? Child, you forgot I have to pay GPL? You got time with GPL. I have to keep these lights on. The customers who think in that manner and refuse to honor their obligation to GPL? are obviously not playing their part in ensuring quality service delivery. So, I will continue to pay my GPL bill on time, every time. 
I recognize the value of your point, mom. You were right. Exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100. The number of active COVID-19 cases in the country continues to climb and has now become very worrying for health officials. With 897 new cases recorded in the past 24 hours, the total number of positive COVID-19 cases in the country has jumped to 11,494. The Minister of Health said that this is the highest number of active cases that have ever been recorded locally. There are over 7,100 active cases in Region 4 alone, followed by Region 3 which has 1,536 active cases. In Region 6, there are 669 active cases, while Region 10 has 621 active cases. While the number of hospitalized cases remain low, it has been climbing steadily. The Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, said there are currently 120 persons hospitalized across the country, with more than 75% of those cases being housed at the Ocean View facility. With the amount of people that we have in hospital, when you look at that, it works out to be about 1.1% of the persons um, who are positive are in hospital. So that's a, that's a very small percentage of those people who have tested positive for COVID are now in the hospital. In the last several days, there has been a slight increase in the number of persons dying from the virus. The Minister of Health said the majority of those persons had underlying medical conditions, followed by those who were unvaccinated. So despite um, having this vaccination program for more than a year, there are some people who remain totally unvaccinated. They haven't got a single dose of vaccine. Then there are some that are partially vaccinated, so they might have come and got one dose of the vaccine. And there are a few others who might have gotten both doses of the vaccine, but when you look at the period from when they got the vaccine to now, um, it's more than six months, so which means that the effectiveness of the vaccine would have weaned. Dr. Anthony said the authorities continue to monitor the overall COVID-19 situation in the country. He said because of the volume of cases reported, it is expected that more people will get sick, especially those who are unvaccinated and those with underlying conditions. There has also been an increase in fully vaccinated persons succumbing to the virus. Still with COVID-19, 15 children have lost their lives to the virus since the beginning of the pandemic in Guyana, with four of those deaths recorded less than a week ago. Three of those children who died recently passed away before arriving at a hospital, and an investigation has been launched into their deaths. For the others, the health ministers today said that some had pre-existing conditions, while the other cases are still on the probe. For some of those uh, children that would have been hospitalized, we know for sure some of the comorbidities that they've had and the challenges because some of them the prognosis was poor with the underlying disease and then they got COVID so that compounded and or complicated the problem. The health minister has assured that continuous monitoring will be done. Within the ministry we have a small committee of doctors who are going to get these charts and review them more thoroughly and do some interviews with the uh, family of these children. So hopefully that will give us a better understanding of what is happening. It is unclear how many children in total are currently positive with COVID-19, but the Ghana Teachers Union today announced that it knows of at least 165 children who have tested positive for the virus in the past two weeks alone. In the first two weeks since the reopening of schools, the Ghana Teachers Union has found that 320 teachers and more than 165 students have tested positive for COVID-19. 
The GTU has renewed its call for all public schools to be closed for face-to-face -face learning for 14 days to allow the Ministry of Education to institute additional systems to ensure a safer reopening of the schools. The Ministry of Education continues to reject the calls for a return to online learning, even as the number of COVID-19 cases continues to surge. There are now over 11,000 active cases of COVID-19 in the country, with the majority of those persons isolated at home. In a letter to the Chief Education Officer, the Gannett Teachers Union President Mark Light said the situation can no longer be ignored. He said approximately 152 schools have reported cases of teachers learners and support staff testing positive for the virus. Mr. Light said the union is proposing that teachers engage learners virtually during the 14-day period while the Ministry of Education reassesses its face-to-face -face plan for learners during the pandemic. We propose that teachers engage learners virtually during these 14 days while the Ministry of Education reassess, reassesses its face-to-face -face plan for learners during this period, this pandemic. Presently, many schools have learners seated two in one bench. We believe keeping teachers and students out of the crowded school schools will help to reduce the present spike in COVID positive cases in Guyana. The Ministry of Education has declared the Ministry of Health has declared more than 1,000 cases daily in the past week. According to the GTU, learning cannot occur in an environment where there is trauma and fear and the union needs the Ministry of Education to begin acting responsibly. The Education Ministry has not been backing down from its decision to reopen all schools in the country for full-time face-to-face learning, at the same time that the country is witnessing the biggest spike in new COVID-19 cases. A late night fire at two bonds at the La Parkin Shipping Company's facilities in Lombard Street has left hundreds of millions of dollars in damages and losses. A number of imported vehicles are among the items that were badly damaged and destroyed in the blaze. The Ghana Revenue Authority has announced that it will be assisting with the putting together of an inventory of the goods that were lost in the blaze. Some of GRA's operations at the shipping facility were also hampered. Today, the Comptroller of Customs, Excise and Trade Operations at the GRA, Rohan Biku, said that the Revenue Authority will be doing its best to ensure that the flow of business is not hampered. Um, this is rather unfortunate. I mean, this incident is beyond our control. I think it's beyond the control of the company as well. But we are now working with them um, to ensure that their, their flow of business is not impeded. So uh, we've just had discussions with them where we can um, uh, work with them to in, in install or to implement some temporary measures, some in, in, um, interim measures. Of course, we're uh, concerned also about the revenues and losses to the revenues of the state. But um, inventory is something that we are going to work on very quickly. And um, as, soon as, they, as soon as they get their um, their up together, we are ready to um, to implement the temporary measures to facilitate. At around 11:30 p.m. on Sunday, the fire service responded to the emergency situation at the facility. The firemen had to rush to clear the area out, as well as douse the blaze, as there were several flammable materials in the same location. GRA Commissioner General Godfrey Stacia said as the investigation begins into the blaze, the Ghana Revenue Authority will be doing all it can to help the affected shipping companies and importers. What we would do, we would try to facilitate the clearance of them as soon as possible. But as for the reimportation, that has to be something that has to be worked out between LPK, the insurance companies and the shippers. Mr. Stacia emphasized that while the GRA is concerned about revenue loss because of the blaze, the agency will still offer help. So we're now taking an inventory of what has been burnt, some vehicles also, that were in the wharf has also been burnt up. So we're doing an inventory and then we shall give you an update thereafter. Well, what's in, the, somebody, uh, go ahead. in the meantime, we are trying to, I've asked, I've asked the LPK to try to get power back on to, to the front office so that we, our operations will, will continue. The insurance company covering the facility has already started its own investigations. Longtime Guyanese business magnate Yisu Passat died early this morning at the age of 93. In extending sympathy to his family, President Irfan Ali this morning said Guyana has lost an outstanding soul in Dr. Yisu Passat, a true son of the soil.
Prasad was a leading member of the Ghana private sector and business community for well over 50 years. He led in his field as chairman of the Marara Distillers Limited for several years and was also the founder of the Marara Bank Limited and the Institute of Private Enterprise Development, IPED. In a statement today, IPED said, in the most difficult of times, Dr. Prasad understood that it was necessary to find ways to recreate and nurture small and micro businesses in the country. The organization said while his business acumen is a challenge, his greatest desire was to help people to help themselves. In a statement, the leader of the opposition said Yesu Prasad was a businessman who always distinguished himself with his successful business ventures and highly impactful civic and philanthropic works. According to the opposition, Dr. Yesu Prasad was celebrated for his outstanding contributions to business and philanthropy in Guyana and abroad. The CARICOM Secretariat also extended condolences on the passing of Yesu Prasad, and the trade unions in Guyana, especially Gawu, has also extended condolences. Dr. Yisu Prasad was a chartered accountant by profession and for a number of decades was seen as the leading and most prominent business figure in the country. He was considered by the companies he founded as a master entrepreneur who dedicated his life to recreating and nurturing the small and micro business sector in Guyana. Prasad was also well known for his philanthropic work over the years and was always keen to make known his position on several national issues, including political and economic issues. He was always praised by colleagues in the business sector in Guyana and across the region. News source understands that Dr. Yesu Prasad had been ailing for a while and passed away early this morning at his home. We extend our condolences to his family and friends. Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo under the theme Charting a Sustainable Energy Future will be hosted at the Guyana Marriott from the 15th to the 18th of February 2022. Meet and engage with energy leaders from around the world. The conference will feature addresses from His Excellency President Irfan Ali, His Excellency Vice President Bharat Jagdio, Honorable Prime Minister Mark Phillips, His Excellency Chandrika Prasad Santoki, Honorable Prime Minister Mia Motley and many other highly esteemed speakers. Charting a Sustainable Energy Future, Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Sonia, you think people easy? People just really want to do their own thing. Look across the road how we build in the house Lolo. The building code says you're supposed to be two feet off the ground. And when the place flood, them just be the first to complain. But you know sometimes we that just contribute to the flooding with we behavior. You know by we just throw things in the drains and canals. We don't keep the gutters clean and dispose of garbage properly. By the way, you got an emergency kit? Yes, yeah, Sonia. I got me on and it got drinking water, army medicines, and for say things like band-aids, iodine, bandages. And me on got in toothpaste, a change of underwear and clothing, toilet paper and so, Guyana, our country, our responsibility. It's one of your biggest goals getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100. Fiber, think fast. GGT Fiber has three packages with download speeds of 50, 100, and 150 megabits per second. That's fast enough to stream movies and music, to chat with Gran and Fran, 
to study, and more. What would you do? Upgrade to GTT Fiber today and don't get left behind tomorrow. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Across the region tonight, in Trinidad, the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, has put together a five-member team to evaluate the state's handling of the COVID-19 virus with a professional eye and present their findings in one week. The joint trade union movement wrote to Attorney General Faris al rawi on Thursday detailing their suggestions as an alternative to the vaccine policy and one of their suggestions was an independent panel to vet the government's data and statistics on the COVID-19 virus in the country. The JTUM had asked that they nominate two of the people in the committee and that a chairman be appointed by the president. But on Saturday, the Prime Minister said that he selected the five independent experts without any consultation with the trade union movement. The Prime Minister selected a team to be led by Professor Terence Mungal, who is the Dean at the Faculty of Medical Sciences at the University of the West Indies. The team was given the scope to identify the number of patients who died from COVID-19 and demarcate those deaths by number and types of comorbidities, including obesity. They will also categorize their findings by ethnicity, age and gender. The team has been given one week to also complete its mandate. Jamaica has recorded 72 murders during the first two weeks of the new year, according to figures released by the Jamaican Constabulary Force. The figures represent a 24% increase in murders compared to the corresponding period last year. The parish of Westmoreland, located on the south side of the island, recorded a 350% increase in the number of murders, with the Constabulary Force reporting nine murders so far this year, as compared with two for the corresponding period last year. According to the Jamaican Constabulary Force, from the 1st to the 15th of January, there was a 300% increase in murders in the Kingston Central Division, with four murders since the start of the year, compared to one for the corresponding period last year. There were also increases of 100% and 80% in a number of other areas across the island. Robberies were up 9.3% while rape and break-ins fell when compared with last year's figures for the corresponding period. Over the weekend, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said that a section of Savannah Lamar in Westmoreland had been declared a zone of special operations. And finally tonight, international news. In China, Beijing city officials are recommending people stop ordering items to be delivered from overseas. After seeing a local woman may have been infected by Omicron after opening a parcel. They repeated the theory that COVID-19 could be spread internationally on imports of frozen food, something that many scientists have questioned. Officials said the woman who tested positive had no history of travel. They added that they found traces of the virus in a package that she received. The infection comes less than three weeks before Beijing is set to host the Winter Olympics. On Monday, China announced that it would not be selling tickets to members of the public for the Games. As part of virus control measures, only people invited will be allowed to attend. It is not yet clear how they will be selected or whether they will have to be quarantined. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, thanking you for joining us and encouraging you to stay safe. <laughs>